Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the homework check video. Uh, make sure you have done your homework before proceeding through this video, and I really mean it. Don't rob yourself of the opportunity to give these sentences a shot on your own terms before coming to this video to check and confirm the answers. The schedule hasn't actually changed at all. Uh, this is what we're going to do in class today anyway, so this works pretty good as e-learning content. Uh, and we're still going to do a chapter 12 translation quiz tomorrow. There will be more details on that towards the end of the video. But one of the sentences from the homework is going to be uh, reappearing on that quiz. I wasn't able to adequately answer people's questions about how scientists calculate the age of the universe. There is a margin of error of like billions of years, but apparently they do it by measuring the light of some of the very oldest stars, which is pretty cool. Uh, so remember, we're getting used to this perfect tense still. Um, I might even put these endings on the test tomorrow. I haven't quite decided yet. But perfect, perfect, as in not plu perfect or future perfect. Forms are actually really unique. So that by unique, I mean they stand out a lot. So I'm going to go, it might sound silly, but before I check the homework, I'm going to go through all six of these endings. The first person singular one, this long I, that's the ending that shows up in the third uh, principal part of the verb in its dictionary entry. Like, uh, let's see, amo, amare, amavi. Okay, so if you drop that I, that's how you get the perfect stem, just to illustrate that. real quick um, and yeah if you know you're looking at what looks to be a verb but it's ending in long i at this point uh, that is going to be a um, first person singular perfect verb there's, there's no other time a verb would be ending in i okay if we think of our imperatives which are some of the, the weirder forms of verbs those always end in e for us currently at this point um, maybe a if it's a first conjugation Singular imperative. But anyway, a verb in long I, that's pretty unique actually. <clears throat> the lower right, I have all six of them, as you can see. Second person singular is also very unique. Isti there with the long I at the end, but there's this uh, um, S uh, including ending before that or sequence of letters before that. Now the third singular and first plural, those are not great. I've talked about before because um, they are not distinct. We could be looking at a third or fourth conjugation verb in the present tense ending this way. So we actually prefer the other four endings. And remember, we're translating these verbs as just you verbed or you have verbed, I verbed, I have verbed for first person singular, etc. You have to use has for third person singular because that's just, we don't say he or she have done something. He have. No, she has. Yeah, we say has. Uh, and then, yeah, first plural, it's not distinct, but that would be we verbed. And then the second plural, it's back to the very distinct, unique endings uh, that we have mostly in the set of verb endings. And that one is crazy. This third person plural one, A, or E R U N T, A runt, um, it sticks out like a sore thumb in the set. But uh, that's like a good thing because um, it's just like unmistakable. As soon as you see a verb ending in that very distinct E-R-U-N-T verb ending, you know you're looking at a third person plural perfect verb. But keep in mind, we do have three tenses in the perfect system. And so those are just perfect, perfect I verbed verb endings. But pluperfect verb endings are actually more consistent to spot. They all have that ERA in the ending. The first singular notably ends in M, which is a little weird, but not that weird. And then future perfect, you're mostly seeing ERI in the ending, except for first singular, which is just ERO. Um, and that's will have verbed. And that's the rarest one by far. But these two are the more common ones. Unfortunately, I don't think we see many pluperfect ones in the sentences this chapter. And um, these are the helping verbs that you use to translate all of our tenses. Okay, last thing before I start looking at the homework. 
uh, are a list of perfect stems to watch for, meaning third principal parts that actually look pretty weird. Usually third principal parts are pretty close to the first two and you will be able to recognize the verb even if maybe one or two letters has changed. But I picked out all the verbs from the first 12 chapters that I think are a little weirder than just that. The, the red ones are, I think, the weirdest ones. And I don't know what happened to... Well, I'm just go there. Fix that real quick. Um, this is the second weirdest one to me, um, next to Dodare, uh, because it just looks so different. So Dodare, daddy, datum to give. Uh, I'm, I'm including the fourth principle parts, but remember, we won't need the fourth principle parts until chapter 19. Maybe not re remember because I don't think y'all knew that. But yeah, we're not going to need the fourth principle parts for a little longer. Usually the fourth principle parts are really similar to the first two principle parts. And it's the third that might be the one sticking out a little bit. Video, videre, weedy. That one's not too bad. That's very typical uh, where maybe a vowel is shifting a little bit. In that case, just the I is getting a macron. Um, okay, so I say fooey. Fooey's pretty weird. We haven't seen it too much. I meant to bold it. Possum posse patui is not too weird because that's actually like a second conjugation style perfect stem ending with the U showing up. Um Maneomaneri Monsi, that's not too weird, but the S is is different. Uh, it might not look to you like the verb remain at that point, but it still is just remain. Ago agra eggy with the E, that's pretty straightforward. And then you see with duco, ducra, and garo, sometimes it's just like a consonant and the initial stem is shifting. So the C turning to an X in duco, the R turning to two S's in garo, scribo, the B switches over to a P and an S as well. So sometimes it's like one letter turning into to two separate ones or a whole different letter. Um, Copio copra capi, so the A turns into an E. Dico, dicra, dixi, the C turns into an X. Fakio fakra is like ago, and that the A turn, or yeah, the A turns into an E. And then the, those purple ones right there are just unique because uh, the stem is basically not really different than the first two principal parts, other than the fact that there's a macron over the vowel. And I guess I can add Wideo to that list as well. So I'll do that and then we'll move on to the homework if you haven't already skipped past this part, which would be a bad thing to do. All right, I'm gonna go through these and keep in mind if you have any questions on any of this, I'm on standby all day. So hit me up on Teams chat um, politely and reasonably and I will explain anything in more detail to you if it's confusing. Okay, number one, quonium he acerbi diu ruminabont illi beati ad osium numquam winerant. This isn't too bad, but it might have some vocab that throws you off. Quonium is a conjunction we don't see very often, so that's just sense. And then I see he acerbi, I see that long I repeating. So I think those go together, and I think they could be a subject, but that's from Hikai Kak, which is always kind of hard. But he with the long I is only on one spot, and that's the nominative plural masculine. So kind of like in the middle to the right, uh, I mean, sorry, to the left in the middle-ish, uh, that nominative, right? That nominative plural masculine. So Hikakak is this in the singular, but this is going to be plural, so it's going to be these. And if it's masculine, I can add men to it. And, um, and then it's a caribbean. He. So it's uh, that's a newish adjective. I think we got last chapter, maybe, or maybe this chapter, bitter or harsh, like acerbic. Yeah, I guess that was this, this chapter. So since these harsh men, and then du is just an adverb for a long time, Remine bont, that is not something we need to dwell on for too long because that is good old imperfect tense. So remained is fine, or uh, harsh men were remaining for a long time. You could do were remaining um, if you want. And then we see Illy, B-A-T, and hopefully if you, if you figured out he, Illy wouldn't be too hard because you're following kind of a pattern at that point, like these men, blah, 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 whereas, and when we get to Illy, and we have B-A-T as its adjective instead of a Caribbean, it'll be those men, right, because that is, um, 
That is a nominative plural of illy. So are both uh, both of these demonstratives are nominative plural masculine. Illy with the long I could be dative, but seeing it in this context right after he, the Caribbean, um, where it's like these harsh men. Now I'm looking at those happy men. Again, you can add men because it's masculine. And if we look at the end of that second part, when a runt is the verb, that E-R-U-N-T screams out to me perfect tense. But it's numquam venera. So it's like never came or never have come to Asia. So when a runt there is perfect tense, third person plural. Um, so I'm translating both these verbs as just verbed. But in this context where we have an imperfect in the first part and perfect in the second, there probably is maybe an attempt on the textbook writers here to get us to use our more nuanced endings. Um, why does the thing come back when I go out of uh, full screen? It's kind of weird. So what it might want us to do is something like, um, uh, sim oh, okay. since these bitter men were remaining for a long time, those happy men never have come to a, actually that sounds kind of weird. So yeah, like there, that's me using the helping verbs that are distinct to perfect and imperfect respectively, but I don't think it sounds much better than just translating both as verbs. So I'm just gonna stick with my initial translation. If I pick this one on a, or on the quiz tomorrow, I would ask about the tense of when they run specifically, maybe both verbs to kind of keep you on your, toes so that you can show me that you know ruminabot is imperfect whereas when a runt is perfect okay don't don't forget our good old ba ending is just imperfect that's an old tense that we should be really used to now where when a runt the second and last verb is our new third person plural perfect tense um and maybe i'd ask about the case of asia just being accusative object of ad but i'd probably just ask the case not so much okay <clears throat> number two studium literarum nobis multas voluptates dedit okay hopefully i've prepped you guys now for this verb because i'm seeing uh one of the verbs from my list of weird perfect stems and that's uh deddy from do dare to give and uh studium sometimes is pursuit but here it's just going to be study that's fine i think study is, is what works best so these first two words should be the study of literature. Literarum is genitive, um, plural, first declension. And then what? Something about nobis. Nobis is going to be us, either to us or us plus a preposition. I'm actually not seeing any prepositions that take ablatives nearby. But let's come back to it. So study of literature, and let's let's look at our verb. Dead it is from dodare. It's perfect tense. So it's the study of literature gave and gave or has given we could do has given if you want but maybe just go with gave um and so if we're giving something maybe it's 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 uh to us so gave to us multus voluptates and that's just the direct object i pick this one again i'd ask the tense of dedit which is third singular perfect whereas when a run number one was third plural and i'd ask the um, case and function of nobis because nobis isn't going to go away it's indirect it's an indirect object here it's the dative case it's not ablative um, it could be ablative in other contexts so i want you to be able to recognize nobis um, if it was vobis i would be to y'all but nobis is the first person plural personal pronoun um, so its singular counterpart is mihi Okay, number three, that's it, right? Yeah, that's the tense of dedit and the case and function of nobis. Number three, nemis multi ad alskintes pro patria cicerunt et vitas amiserunt. I don't know, I guess I didn't point out this verb, but cado cadera, which is a new verb to fall or even die, that definitely has a weird third principle part, kikiti. Um, maybe I did, but that one, Disco, Discra, Didici, and Dodare, Dedi, those are the weirdest ones. So I need to go look at that list again. But that is the first verb I'm seeing. I'm seeing two verbs. Nimis is an adverb I feel some of us maybe aren't used to still, 
but it just means like too or too much. So maybe if I ignore it initially, it's just many youths looks to be our subject. And then kekiderunt, as weird as it is, <clears throat> as long as you can identify that it's coming from kato katara, it's not too bad. Uh, many youths have fallen or just fell. And then uh, it's like two, maybe two many youths um, have fallen on account of, well, I'm getting ahead of myself, but pro is kind of new. It can be for, before, uh, or for, or um, yeah, for the sake of. Um, but often it's just going to be for. And so like for the, the fatherland, um, I went with something that's a little more like Procter. Um, that's okay, that works, but let me, let me switch it over because that makes it sound like it's Procter. All right, and uh, Amito Amitra. So Amito Amitra is coming from, um, yeah, this verb right here, Amito Amitra Misi. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the S, when that's showing up, it's going to be one of the perfect tenses. Um, it's not that double T. Okay, so, um, and they, and it looks like it's the same exact ending, right? This E, R, U, and T. So too many youths fell for the sake of the fatherland, and they, uh, we don't want to say like loss or sent away. That would be weird here, sent away lives. Um, I think they're trying to, to get us to say lost lives. Okay, for the sake of, oh yeah, fix that one, I guess, let's see, and if I pick this, I'm going to go full screen again in a second, um, okay, if I pick this one, I would ask the case of patria being ablative, pro is a preposition that takes an ablative, and I'd ask the tense person a number of both of these verbs, because they're both third plural, uh, third person, that is, plural, number perfect tense that very distinct unique third person plural ending e-r-u-n-t all right number four quad magister amicus eorum discipulus a principio cum patientia docabit multa postparvum tempus dedicarent okay this is very long but it's not too hard um quad is this conjunction we probably haven't seen too much it just means because so it's something about because the teacher, but then I see something about a friend, and hopefully maybe you remember that amicus doesn't just have to be the noun friend, but it can be an adjective friendly. So because the friendly teacher, because actually they're both masculine singular nominators, so that kind of works, or it, it does work, right? They're actually in agreement, even though their endings don't look similar. They're both nominative singular masculine of the second declension. And then I see a bunch of craziness that I'm not sure what to do with, but if I kind of move my eye towards the middle of the sentence, the first verb is docabit, halfway through. And that's from docao, docari, to teach. So, and uh, that's good old, what tense, anyone? No, well, I'm not streaming, so you can't tell me. But that is future tense, so because the friendly teacher will teach, and then what's he going to teach? Uh, what direct object? Well, I see the scipulos. So that makes sense, right? So he's going to teach the students, but not just the students or any students. It's aorum students. And I think aorum must be going with the scipulos. And if you don't know, I should write it down in your notes. Aorum is, or aorum, if the O is an A, that's going to be there. It's just going to mean there because it's a plural personal. Um, Oh, geez. Okay, I, I just split up these slides a little bad. Their students, a principio, a is really new. I forgot y'all had a. <clears throat> um, but that means from. So from the beginning with patience. So let's add a couple things to our, uh, hopefully, let's see. Yeah, a is the shortened version of ob that means from and that takes an ablative it is a preposition and then aorum is there um, it's genitive masculine or neuter technically you turn that o into an a it would still be there because we can't really gender our personal pronouns our third person personal pronouns or any of our plural pronouns in english okay and then uh something about okay this last part multiple parum tempus Dedicarent. All right, dedicarent is kind of crazy, but that is from disco discara to learn, and that E R I N T 
is not perfect. It's not flu perfect. It's actually future perfect. So I promise you guys you wouldn't see this thing more than like two or three times this whole semester. I think this is the second time. So that means we're almost not going to see future perfect anymore at all. But um, multi doesn't work as my subject. So I think we're still just talking about like they, they're plural, uh, as in the students, not still, but like now we're talking about they, the students. They're, they're kind of the, the implied subject. So they will have learned, what will they have learned? Actually, multa is what works as the direct object. They will learn much after a small time. There we go. So, yeah, I'm using purple to highlight all perfect endings, whether it's perfect, future perfect, or plu perfect. This is future perfect, though. So it's that guy all the way to the bottom right. They will have a verb. These future verbs are pretty easy to spot, right? It's E-R-I across the board, except for the first singular. Um, we'll have verbed. This is a very colorful sentence. If I pick this one, I would ask the tense personal number of didike rent, future perfect, third singular. I probably wouldn't ask doke bit, which is just future, right? We have two future tenses now. Um, and I'd maybe ask the case of tempus, which tempus almost looks like it could be nominative, but it's accusative actually. And so let me make a little slide for that real quick. And then we'll do our last one. Yeah, post takes an accusative, whereas pro takes an ablative and aw takes an uh, ablative. We must've just got aw, huh? Um, um, post takes an accusative and tempus is neuter. So that's why it's accusative is identical to its nominative singular. All right, this last one is poetic charis, carmina magna, cum cura, semper creabat. Uh, so, is poet is a little weird, but maybe we're getting used to that. So, it wouldn't be like he, comma, the poet. I mean, it could literally, but that's weird. So, how about this or that? Dear poet, charis is going with poeta. Uh, poeta looks feminine, so why is charis going with it? It's because poeta is actually secretly masculine, along with agricola and nauta. Um, this or that dear poet, this is just going to function demonstrably here. We go towards the end. Creabot is this new verb, creo, creare, to create. Uh, created, right? Created, what can his direct object be? Oh, how about um, songs? Uh, or was always creating because simper creabot. Songs, be careful, it's not great songs. Magna is actually going with cura, and that's kind of weird because um, cura is the object of cum. And its adjective buddy is magna, so cum is kind of sandwiched between this ablative noun phrase, which is a little weird, uh, but that's actually very typical. We've probably seen it a couple times before, and uh, we'll continue to see it. If I pick this one, which I won't, because honestly, it, the, the verb is imperfect tense, so I'm not going to pick this one. This is just good old imperfect. Um, so I, it's between one through four, to be honest. Uh, real quick, lightning round number six, Kaiser E.A. Dim De Principio, Ilias Belli Dixit. Uh, don't get thrown off by E.A. Dim. It's just that horrible adjective that means the same. So it's like Caesar said, right? Dixit is from Dico Dico. Caesar said the same, as in like the same thing. We might want to add thing. Uh, De Principio, maybe about the beginning, Ilias Belli. What case are both of those two words? Uh, maybe genitive about the beginning of the war, of the war. Uh, whoops, that should be that war. That war, okay. Oh. All right, and uh, one more lightning round. Etiam id bene fakeros, that's from fakia fakra to do or make. Second person singular, so it's like you, and it looks like it's perfect, but it's, it's pluperfect actually. Okay, for one thing, the A is not there. It's not Fakia Fakra. It's, it's from Feki or Feki. Um, and it's got that ERA. So it's perfect. So you had um, made it well. You had even done it or made it well. That's a great sentence. All right. Iam and Yodim Loco Post Palkas. What is this? Something like they? Because I'm not seeing a subject for our third person plural verb. This is lightning round, I know, but they found him. 
am the direct object, the first word they found him in maybe the same place after a few hours. Okay, that one was on hard mode. All right, the translation quiz tomorrow, one of the sentences from number one through four, questions about verb tense, especially, obviously, that's what the chapter is about. Any verb from the perfect system uh, could show up. Fortunately, we did not have any blue perfect. Uh, we had that blue perfect in like number six or whatever that was a second ago. But uh, we, we just have a lot of perfect and we have one future perfect in number four. And then I'm gonna give you one sentence you haven't seen before. And I guarantee every single word in it will be glossed, meaning I'll give you the dictionary entry of, of virtually every word uh, other than like in. I probably wouldn't gloss the word in. But it's, it's a chance for you to show me your kind of like abilities with translating and grammar when you're not worried about vocabulary. So you can only study for that uh, by just kind of generally like, you know, having done your homework and like maybe looking over the chapter 12 vocabulary a little bit so you have extra familiarity, but studying vocab actually wouldn't really be necessary per se. All right, guys, that's it for today. Please let me know if you have any questions on Teams. Um, and I will be on standby. Otherwise, I'll see you all tomorrow. Despite how much snow there is on the ground, I guess we're going to be there tomorrow. And um, we'll take this quiz, and that is about it. And then we can start Chapter 13 next week, so it's kind of cool. Uh, all right, guys, I'll see you all later.